I um, was getting bored with doing just traditional illustration because I'd done so much of it. And um, I'd, you know, I'd gone through all the phases of doing, trying different techniques and different styles and using colour and everything. And I wanted to go back to doing something that was uh, a lot more hands-on because I found a lot of the um, work I was doing was being done on computer now and I wanted to go back to a more tactile sort of, sort of um, art form. Initially I started off with a, just a, a, an idea that popped into my head about dreadnoughts because I like the boats and the ships and all that sort of thing. But then uh, once I decided I wanted to do a Russian sailor, I, I, I basically cut and pasted a, a face that I liked with a sort of similar life into what I wanted to use and uh, sort of face just to give me some guidance to build off of. And after that I got sort of stuck with that image a little bit in my head and I wanted to get someone that was as close as I could. I didn't really want to go with models because um, I didn't want the girl to be so strikingly beautiful. Not that Sophie isn't, but so strikingly beautiful in a model way that it looked like a fashion shoot or took away from the image as a whole. I wanted the girl to look like basically a conscript, conscript to the um, Russian Navy. And most of the people that enter into the Navy, they're around probably 18 or something like that. So she's, I think she's 21. And so she fitted the look. She had that pale skin and the, you know, bright color eyes. And um, the eyes actually, which I wasn't really on purpose trying to match to the mask, uh, surprisingly worked really well. Uh, so coincidentally, uh, on my dad's side, we have Russian blood. So that kind of worked as the whole thing. I've been told before that I look slightly Russian. So it was quite difficult actually to do one look and just stand there, even though that's probably the most simplest thing to do. Um, but for an actor it's really hard. Um, you just want to move around and kind of like use your hands um, and I couldn't. And so it was a great learning curve for me and um, I really enjoyed it. I, I love it. It's great. It, everything kind of fits together and uh, you know, I don't think there was much editing involved or anything and it just looks wonderful. It looks really good. Simon Cardwell, he's a photographer, we met a while back and just decided that we should probably do some pieces because a lot of my stuff was being photographed and, and put onto models and things like that so uh, we wanted to create something that was more our style and create something that was pretty unique and art directed by us and produced by us solely. Basically Aurora's Night was the brainchild of uh, Stuart McLaughlin, paper artist, who I'm collaborating with at the moment. Uh, we're doing a series of images based around conceptualising um, uh, stories based around paper uh, and being photographed by myself and coming up with different artworks that we can use to formulate new, a new style of imagery for ourselves. I suppose the inspiration for Aurora's Night um, the, the lighting style for it, the inspiration for the lighting style, would come from probably um, about 1940 sort of photography. It has that sort of slight vintage feel to it. So yeah, I was really happy and it fits really well into the layout for the magazine. That's not what it was, um, that's not what it started as. It started out as purely an art print, but it's, it also fitted into the Paper Runway magazine quite well into the masthead. So uh, yeah, I'm really, I'm really happy with it. It's actually one of the most successful pieces for me personally that I've done.